This is a 1988 740 SE. Originally 2 litre, non-turbo, K-Jet. Slowest thing in the freaking world. But I've put a 2.3 turbo in it, as you do. I'll cut straight to the chase then. B230 FK out of a 940, which I drove for about three years. So this engine should have about 100,000 miles on it. And it just has a few little things done to it. It's got the KG2T camshaft uh, fitted back while it was in the 940. I've got a Isuzu NQR intercooler. It's kind of a popular thing to put in these Volvos. I had to make a custom mount for the bottom of that, but otherwise it, it goes in pretty easily. Uh, BSR heat shield. I had to make my own little brackets for that because it didn't really fit great. Um, Put some little heat wrap on the brake reservoir. Probably pointless, but there you go. 15G turbo with a 16T 3 inch angled outlet. And I have a strut brace by Martin Leaf at Viking Fabrications. Those are Land Rover engine mounts. This is how the exhaust exit on the 3 inch angled outlet. It's not actually that bad. Some people are concerned about using the 3 inch because the angle of the exhaust is a bit strange. But it's not bad at all. You can easily get a, a sort of bend in there to get it into the right place. I've just painted the grille as well in a sort of dark grey rover charcoal colour. The emblem is uh, pitted chrome. It's, it's looking bad, so I haven't figured out how to fix that yet. Sparco Evo 2 Plus adapted onto a sliding seat rail. That took a bit of work. It wasn't me that made those aluminium brackets, but they do the job. This is a cheap aftermarket steering wheel of some kind with a... Volvo and boost on it, obviously. I'm uh, missing the gauge cluster that was, uh, I was just messing around with that, uh, putting a Arduino boost gauge in it. AEM air fuel and stack water temperature and oil pressure. Uh, there's a, an additional stack boost gauge up there, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use that. I've made a aluminium uh, block off plate instead. Um, because to be honest, the boost gauge doesn't fit in there. The, the plastic vent behind there stops it going in. So. And I don't really need it if I have an Arduino boost gauge as well. I really like these stack gauges though. They just have a nice, sort of old school, clean design. One thing I need to do is tidy up the wiring down here. Um, the original car doesn't have uh, most of the wiring coming through the, the passenger side, so I've actually rerouted the loom. Um, I took this loom out of, a, out of the same 940 that the engine came from and just stripped out what I didn't need and routed it through this side rather than uh, having the ECU on the driver's side because I basically had more space for wires on this side and I wanted to keep the ECU out of the way. I'm going to try out these EBC yellow pads and see if they're up to their job. It's just on standard disc so they might not be big enough for this uh, for this thing to actually get round the track without overheating but we'll see how it goes. I have a nice stick holding up the boot lid there. Uh, Eagle-eyed viewers will have seen that the battery is not in the front. Uh, it's relocated back here. In the left, there's a recess in the boot, which is perfect, really. Great size. Original plastic battery tray is sitting underneath it there. And I managed to make some brackets uh, that hold it down without using any new holes in the body. So I haven't had to mess up the original body at all. And I have a swirl pot in the back as well. So I've got the original Volvo lift pump, because this car had two pumps, and I've just upgraded the inline pump, and hopefully that'll do the job. Uh, the inline pump is some Walbro GSL something or other. This is going to be tricky to film. I've got an IPD front anti-roll bar. Don't know if I'll keep this, I'm just going to see how it goes. It might be a bit too stiff because I've also got BC Racing coilovers and Kaplenki, if that's how you say it. Uh, quick steer roll correctors, you can see them just on the bottom there. 960 subframe braces, that is this. Martin Leaf again, Viking Fabrications, uh, lower frame brace, underbody brace. Uh, it's a bigger, chunkier thing with triangulation, uh, bigger than the, the Volvo one that is. Here's where the downpipe comes down and roots back there. Original position, it's 3 inch and it actually goes down to 2.5 just at the rear axle. 
because I already had a 2.5 inch rear box on this car so I just wanted to use it again. I actually made this whole exhaust myself and it was my first welding project so it was a, a tough learning curve. I've painted the mount for the gearbox. You can see I've reinforced the rear axle subframe. Uh, so there's one plate there, another plate on the back and on the top as well. Uh, they sometimes twist when you put a bunch of power through them. I'm not even going to put much power through it, but I thought it's a good idea to do it. And I've got these uh, heim jointed rods. Another thing from Martin Leaf Viking Fabrications. Uh, the one above that is also heim jointed. And from here you can actually see I've got two anti roll bars as well. Uh, these are just uh, two standard size bars. When you do the maths on these, it's actually less stiff than having a rear IPD bar. And of course, adjustable pan hard rod with heim joints as well. The aftermarket pump and filter are located in the original position, which is quite handy. Gas coilovers in the rear. They feel a bit soft um, just by pressing the car down. I haven't driven it, so I'm going to have to just see how that goes. One thing I do want to do is add a breather to the valve cover here. I know some people put them on the cap, but um, I think it's a bit awkward having to take it off when you want to put oil in. So I'm very tempted to weld a little attachment onto the cover itself just behind there. The worst part on the outside is where someone drove into it. So it was just parked at the side of the road and some guy in a big truck managed to catch it on the way past. Um, I got a tiny bit of money for it, but it wasn't even enough to, to pay a professional body shop to get it fixed. It's probably worse than it looks on camera. This arch has been pushed in something like one centimetre, so the tire's probably going to catch on it, since the sheet metal on the inside kind of extends inwards quite a bit. Uh, it knocked off the fuel filler cap, which I've managed to get back on. And the rear light got smashed, but that's a new one, and you can obviously see that the sheet metal's damaged back here as well. So there you go. I'm probably forgetting some things, little things that I've done to the car. But please ask any questions that you want and do follow us if you want to see more of this thing in future, ripping around and hopefully doing some burnouts.